All right. Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to this session. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer, and then we'll uh, get into our teaching. Would anyone like to pray? Go ahead. Father God, we thank you and we bless you, Lord. We thank you for this time you have given us, Lord. Lord, help us to walk in wisdom and understanding that comes from you, Lord, in this world for your for the purpose for your purpose alone, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So last class we did chapter, we completed chapter 12, right? Uh, so let's get into chapter 13, which is uh, we're going to talk about leadership. Leadership. How many of us want to be leaders? Some of them don't want to be leaders. Francis doesn't want to be a oh you are. <laughs> oh, you are leaders already. Okay, that's wonderful. Yeah, I got it wrong then. Uh, we're all we're all we're all leaders. Uh, and among many things, one of the one aspect of leadership is influence, right? Uh, when we look at not only in the church, but when we look at globally, when you look at leaders, right, uh, in general, uh, one very interesting, you know, facet in their life is the able to influence people, the ability to influence people, right? Uh, now, remember that leadership can come to us in many different ways, right? One is we grow into leadership. Two is leadership is given to us. So it's given, you learn how to do it. Three is, my father was a businessman. He has his own company. So I'll become the next CEO. Now, this person may not know anything about leadership. right? Uh, so leadership comes in different ways. And when we, uh, especially when we look at ministry also, right? Uh, leadership can come in different ways. Look at the example of Saul. He was, what was he doing? He was going, he went searching for his father's donkeys. God told Samuel, as a person, he's searching for his father's donkeys, go and anoint him as the next king. Saul knew nothing. The Bible says that he was only a good, smart person. That's it. There was no, you know, skills of him to be a leader. So what is it that you and I, uh, you know, certain principles that we can use when it comes to leadership to be effective leaders, right? So whether leadership comes to us on a plate or whether we earn it, whether it's just, you know, uh, given to us over time, the outcome of that leadership depends on us. I can take this role of leadership and misuse it or abuse it, and it's going to end up being non-profitable for me and for my organization and for my ministry, right? So let's look at a few very, very important principles on leadership. And, uh, uh, you know, this is very important that we must all apply this, right? Uh, as you all said, we are already leaders, right? So we got to apply this in our lives, okay? We talk about this uh, a couple of classes before. If you don't see it, you cannot lead people into it. Matthew 15, 14 says, let them alone. The blind, they are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into a ditch. Right? So uh, we know that leaders are able to influence each other. Uh, they come together with a common pursuit. They have they have this ability to uh, you know to speak into people's lives. And they're able to, you know, uh, direct people to the vision, overall vision of the organization, right? But let's look at a few points from here in this point. Right? Let's just make sure. Okay. Right. Leadership requires the ability to see the future and envision intended outcomes, right? So we need the ability, leadership. As leaders, we need the ability to see into the future and envision intended outcomes, right? So that means what? If I am starting with two people, an effective leader will look into the future. The word envision means to see yourself in the future. Like, what, what do I see this organization in the future? And what are the outcomes that I will see? 
through this organization or through this ministry. You get what I'm saying, right? You may have you may have plans to go back from here, plant a new church. The Bible says, "Do not despise meager beginnings, humble beginnings." It's good. You start off, but you must also envision. A good leader envisions that okay, one day, ten years from now, this is what we will be. I'm not talking only about numbers, but I'm talking about impact, right? You can have a church of 200 people and do a bigger impact than have a church of, you know, 600, 700 people and not do much of an impact. You get what I'm saying, right? So when you, as a leader, you must envision further on what do you see yourself, right? And we talked about this, right? Even in our personal lives, right? If we if we don't see ourselves being something, we will never achieve it. Remember this. Right? See yourself in leadership. See yourself in places where you feel, see, in your mind you may feel it's not possible. But God can do it. Right? So you see yourself, you envision yourself, you work hard towards it. Hold on to God's promises. Say, God, this is what your word says. Right? This is what you know, 1 Corinthians 2 9 says, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived. What God has in store for his people. Right? Ephesians 3:20. He is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. More than we can ask, more than we can think, more than we can imagine. So you envision. You envision it. Okay, one day this is what's gonna happen. This is what I see in my mind's eye. Right? Don't close your mind's eye and just keep doing everything that is going on. No, you gotta envision it. Right, and uh, a, a leader without a vision is essentially blind. Now, this is a response. Matthew 15 is a response of uh, uh, the disciples. Jesus' followers are saying, uh, "Look at those, those those Pharisees are coming and telling Jesus, you know, how can you do all of this? How can you, uh, you you're, you know, you're raising up one your own kind of a cult, or you're trying to go against the system that is already there? What does he say?" Jesus is saying, leave them, they are blind. They don't know what they are doing. Meaning what? They, they know everything about the law. They know everything about the scriptures. But they are blind because they don't see that I am the Messiah. I am standing here. Right? When Jesus went into the temple is beautiful. He opens the scrolls to Isaiah and he says, he reads, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And then what does he say? The scripture is fulfilled. This scripture is fulfilled as of today. Generations were waiting to see what you see, but you are not seeing it. Why? They were blind. Their eyes, their mind was blind. Right? So even as you lead people, envision have open your mind's eye, right? Two, maintain proper heart attitudes. Right? Matthew chapter 20, 25 to 28. Let's read that, please. So Jesus got them together to settle things down. He said, You observe how godless rulers throw their weight around how quickly a little power goes to their heads. Is not going to be that way with you. Whoever wants to be great must become a servant. Who wants to be first among you must be your slave. That is what the Son of Man has done. He come to serve, not be served, and then to give away his life in exchange for the many who are held hostage. Mm. Whoever wants to be great, verse 26, whoever wants to be great must first become a servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must first become a slave. So Jesus is turning things around. right? What is happening in the natural is whoever wants to be great must do more and become great. Here he's saying you become a servant first. So he's not talking about in the physical. right? It's not like God wants us to always be one servant, you know, 
oh no i'm i'm nothing no that's not he's talking here about hard attitudes and we're going to look at three important hard attitudes as a leader okay number one servanthood the leader's heart is that of a servant as a leader especially if we are in ministry as a leader we must develop a heart of a servant meaning what we must understand that what i am doing is i am serving people this leadership role that is given to me is to serve the people and not to lord over them not to dictate terms over them that's what servant leadership is servanthood is expressed through humility uh, meekness and sacrifice right servanthood is expressed through humility meekness sacrifice and service right and the lord jesus was the perfect example of all of this did he walk in humility did he walk in meekness but was he also walking in authority yes did he walk in sacrifice sacrificing things for his uh, disciples for his people to a point that he sacrificed his own life right uh, and the the most uh, i would say the most uh, attractive aspect of a leader is their humility the most uh, the character that everyone can see is you know humility can also be shown outwardly you know, outward humility but in the heart you can be can have full of pride but god knows right so as a as a leader we maintain this heart of servanthood not just by saying hey i'm a servant of god but you got to show it in your heart attitude right here in philippians uh, paul writes this beautiful portion of scripture in philippians 2 3 to 11 but uh, let's not read the whole thing let's pick up a few things do not desire you know, don't do anything out of selfish ambition right don't do anything out of selfish ambition be humble you got the word there just look at those words humble look out for another person's interest not just your own jesus who had the nature of god he did not try to be e remain equal with god but instead he gave up all he had and took on the nature of a servant he became like a human being and appeared in human likeness see that right he humbled himself and proverbs 29 23 is beautiful a man's pride will bring him low but the humble in spirit will retain honor you know there's this saying right pride comes before the fall you know sometimes god oversees pride he say okay it's okay let me see let me see let me see god will send the holy spirit the holy spirit is there He's trying to lay the axe to the root, but it's we are just too hard. What's going to happen? What's going to wait, 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 wait? He'll give chances. He'll give opportunities. Everything. But if there is no change, God will bring correction. Can you give me an example to whom he did that? Where a person, you know, God kept intervening. There was no change. It's all. Right? King Saul. What happened to King Saul? He kept on. You think God, you know, he was a good man. When in 1 Samuel 15, uh, Samuel says, there was a time when you looked at you looked at yourself as a very simple person, very small in your own eyes. But now, after becoming the king of Israel, you have disobeyed God. When, we, when I told you, don't bring back those sacrifices from the enemy's camp, go and destroy them, leave everything, just come back empty-handed. You went, you saw the flock, you saw that they were healthy, you brought them and came. And when I'm asking you, Samuel is asking, what did you do? You're saying, no, I brought some because I thought we can offer it to God. You know, pride is is something that can really destroy us it will destroy us one of the things that 
we must stay away from is pride. And pride is very subtle. It can just come in in a very small way, especially when you're a leader. Right? When we are at the entrance level, it may not be pride. Right? As we grow, we get leadership roles. You're given the mic, you're given the pulpit, you're given uh, opportunities. Pride can slip in. So how do I, as a leader, stay away from it? Go back to God. One of the things we can always say is, God, nothing that we do is on our own. John 15 says, sorry, is that John 15? I'm not sure what the chapter is. But it says, without me, you can do nothing. End of story. So that verse itself should say, OK, God, please help me to remember that without you, I can do nothing. Psalms 139 says, all my days are ordained in your hands. So the more I try to think, OK, I'll do this, 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 God is saying, hey, I am ordaining the days of your hand. Right? So walk in, um, um, in, you know, in humility. Two is passion. As a leader, you must be passionate about your what you're doing. Right? Uh, a leader's passion is expressed through the enthusiasm with, with which he goes about things. His passion is demonstrated through hard work, the ability to stay the vision during turbulent times. Now, whether it's ministry, whether it's business, you will have ups and downs. And passion is very easily, it can dry out. Right? It's like when you become a believer. You become a believer, what happens? First thing you do is 21 days fasting and prayer. The one you'll do that full of zeal. Then after one year, what happens? Five days fasting and prayer is hard. <laughs> Why? Passion is gone. It's not like God is gone. God is still there. God is still working. God will not change. Right? But our zeal and passion for the things of God has changed. It may be there, but not as before. You get what I'm saying? Right? So one ability that a leader must have is to drive the passion in their own heart and their own spirit. Tell yourself, hey, I may feel weak right now. I may feel uh, you know, that this is not going right. And, I just feel that, OK, everything's so dry. But a leader must be passionate about what he's doing. You know, we've been preaching every Sunday. Every Sunday, we preach in church. So many years, right? And yesterday, uh, on Saturday, I was preparing for the sermon. And by his stripes, we are healed. May have preached it so many times. I may know about it. But I remember saying, God, you make it real in me. Make it real. This word, this sentence, we've used it thousands of times. But make it real. Right? Put that reality of the cross inside. Right? And when we do that, we're driving ourselves. And so we were able to prepare well. We were able to keep that fire burning. Right? The enemy, what, what he wants to do? He'll, he, you know, just picture it this way. He's like, coming with a hose pipe with water, and he's trying to use all the water he can to burn it off. Think of it that way, right? like a picture. He's trying to just burn off that fire inside us. But what must we do? Spark it into flame, right? Fan into flame, Paul says. You fan it, God. Fan the, the passion, the desire. Look at the Apostle Paul. Towards the end of his life, what is he saying? He's going to die. Maybe another one month he's going to die. He's saying, oh, I'm not worried about what's happened before. I'm not worried about the churches that I've started. I'm not looking at what I've achieved, but I hold on and I look on forward. I press on to what God has for me. And I will look on. I will continue to do ministry even to the last breath. 
that's a very hard place to be in, right? Now, it's not like Paul is sitting in the beach and telling this. His body is full of bruises. He's gone through hell and torment, shipwrecks and beaten and put in prison and no, you know the churches, the the are you know the churches, the the believers are going through uh, so many problems, and he's also there's so much that this one person is going through. But he's saying, I forget what is behind. I continue to pursue what God has for me. What a passion! And this should be our desire, God. No matter what we're doing, my passion is to look to you. Right. So keep that fire burning. Uh, up into the spirit of God, right? Some of the things that uh, I'll just give you an example. Of what I do, maybe it can help you. Um, you know, sometimes we are weak; we are not able to pray, right? so you know, we just try to pray and we pray and we finish prayer and we feel, oh, I didn't feel like I prayed. How many of you felt that, right? We prayed and then after that we said, did, did we finish prayer? Uh, is it over? Don't feel anything. Firstly, remember it's not about our feeling. God will work. God is ministering he's putting the deposit but but uh, also the what i do is sometimes i uh, i just begin to pray in the spirit i'm not trying from my ability right so i'm trying i'm saying holy spirit you pray you put your words the bible says that you no know, paul says he's when the spirit prays he he is praying mysteries to god which will build us, right? He's praying. There's a there's a communication that's happening with God and our spirit. So that's powerful, right? So you 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 can tell yourself, okay, I'm gonna do this, right? Be passionate, uh, fan it into flame. Third third hard attitude. Number one. What was the first one we saw? Servanthood. Two. Passion. Three, self-control. Mm. Self-control, what is it? It is the ability to be self-governing, demonstrated through self-discipline and self-restraint. Many selves. Self-control is the ability to be self-governing. That means, as a leader, you must be able to govern yourself. Take care of yourself. Demonstrate it through self-discipline and self-restraint. There are times as leaders, I mean, not, not times, but we must always discipline ourselves. All through the book of Proverbs and the Psalms, right? And, the, and uh, you know, uh, the, the psalmist says, uh, the Lord disciplines or chastises those whom he loves, right? So, we, as a leader, you know, no, nobody is, let's look at this, uh, self-governing. There will come a time nobody will be checking on you as a leader. Did you pray? Did you read your word? Did you finish your work? Like, for example, you got your own business. You're doing your business. Do you think your wife or your uh, children are going to come and tell you, hey, uh, today you had a meeting at 11 o'clock. Did you attend the meeting? No. Right, that's not going to happen because you need to be able to be self-governing, right? Uh, so a leader's he keeps a check on himself, his time, his work, his habits, his productivity, his interactions with people, uh, his resources, everything that he has, he needs to keep keep a check on it, right? Uh, and two was self. Let's look at self-discipline. We must discipline ourselves as leaders. How do I discipline myself? Say, God, okay, this is the timetable that I'm putting for my life. This is what I will try to follow. God, help me to be disciplined to follow this. Very simple, right? Being disciplined. Uh, discipline can also be in terms of, you know, uh, uh, the things that we are doing in the natural, right? Uh, Following time, being punctual, being uh, uh, being patient, listening to people when they are speaking. So many things. These are all disciplines that we must learn, right? And also to, to have self-restraint. There will be times you'll have to say, you'll have to restrain yourself. You'll need to stop. 
you'll need to you know like for example as pastors or leaders we will have to fast and pray god may say fast and pray we have to have the ability to restrain ourselves right everyone are eating and enjoying but god is telling you to fast so you got to have the ability okay i'll restrain myself and not only in terms of fasting but in many other areas develop the ability to restrain yourself so those are the three hard attitudes number one was servanthood to be passionate three is self control right okay next point maintain proper people skills proverbs 2028 go ahead anyone can read please proverbs 2028 love and truth forms a good leader sound leadership is founded on loving integrity mm. proverbs 1428 says the mark of a good leader is loyal followers leadership is nothing without a following see look at this leadership is about people you know you've heard it saying right ministry is about people not sunday service it's an aspect of ministry but ministry is about people leadership is about people so leadership involves vision goals planning direction responsibility decision making leadership is about people if you have no one following you you are not a leader you're a leader to yourself you're a self proclaimed leader that's what it is right so for example you say you're a leader you must have people following you yes or no it's common sense right you, you we cannot be you cannot say okay hey i'm a leader and have nobody following you right i know now we we just said i'm a leader but no we say pastor nobody is following me <laughs> i'm talking about in terms of you know uh, in the natural as a leader uh you must you know leaders will have people following you and working with people is we need people skills right uh, what are people skills uh, people skills are skills of being showing how many of you have heard of this sympathy empathy uh, you know building rapport uh, building a connection being compassionate all of these things are called people skills basic manners of saying thank you sorry please all these are people skills looking at a person when they are talking to them uh, not interrupting people when they are speaking these are all people skills right and as a leader people skills are very 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 important whether you are in a town whether you are in a city you must have people skills if we don't have people skills we can develop them right many of us may say hey i'm an introvert i don't like to talk to people i am most comfortable alone like me right? if one person is with me also it's enough for me i don't need 10 20 people around me but that's not what leadership is as a leader i must be able to talk to people i remember in i think 2011 2010 2011 you know when uh, i used to you know lead worship in church and that time it was at central so uh, people would after church say come up and say uh, hey thank you for leading very, very nice worship or they would give us give me feedback but initially what i used to do is finish the service and then the uh, you know sometimes pastor would call up for the ministry song sometimes he wouldn't he would just close so when i know he is not calling i i've already decided in my mind go up take my guitar my bag is there put the zip get down the stage go take a left go to the bike take the bike and go if i see people if they say hi i'll say hi <laughs> if they don't say hi good for me because i don't want to talk go to the bike sit go home and i did that for more than a year i just finish come down finish go why i'm an introvert i i'm not afraid when i'm on stage give me my guitar we can i can lead worship preach all of that okay but outside of stage people skills i had the people skills 
but I'm an introvert. I don't want to talk to people. You see what I'm, you see what I'm trying to say. It's not like my English was bad or I don't know how to speak. I knew it. I don't want to speak. I was confident, right? But by nature, I didn't want to speak. But as a leader, very, very important is that I must learn to step out and know that I'm ministering to people. Leadership is about people. Right? And after understanding, many of my friends, you know, many of them would say, hey, where were you after Sunday? I, you were there. I didn't see you. It's because I ran away. <laughs> then I made up my, I said, no, I, I have to stay back. If I want to grow in my leadership, I can't be doing this. I can't be running away. If I want to start, get people to become leaders and start life groups, I can't do it on the phone. I can't do everything on the phone, or I can't just say you become a leader. I need to build a rapport with the person, make him understand what leadership, I mean, you know, what life groups are, get to know them, and then eventually get them into leadership. Right? So developing people's skills is very important. Right? Uh, when elder people come and talk, you know, especially you have senior folks, senior citizens who come and talk to you, right? Uh, just being respectable in front of them. That's a people skill, right? And and so we must develop that as leaders. Um, know how to speak the right words. Give leaders are encouragers. Speak the right words. Give encouragement when they lead. Uh, when you when you talk to people, uh, leaders are builders. They build people up. Uh, Leaders are secure and hence give people to think, freedom to think, decide, and act independently. Good leaders do not manipulate people. Good leaders do not show partiality or favoritism. Good leaders correct lovingly for their benefit. Good leaders genuinely care for the people. Look at those points, right? As a leader, I must give the person the ability to make their own decisions, especially when it comes to ministry. One of the things that we always do, uh, and we have it in our membership uh, booklet also, is as pastors, we are here. You have any uh, you know, decision to make, we can give you godly counsel, but we will not make the decision for you. It is your decision. It is your life, your decision. You make the decision. Right. So sometimes, you know, people have come up to me, oh, Pastor, I think God has called me to be single all my life. Now, what do we do? So I remember this happened a couple of months back. I think God is calling me to be single, celibacy. I said, why do you feel that? I know I just feel that. I said, OK, you, you, you pray, you see, you know, marriage is not wrong. Having children is not wrong. They're a blessing from God. Uh, but if you feel that way, you pray, ask God for direction. And then you can decide what you want to do. But this is what the Bible says, right? Uh, no, but Apostle Paul was single. If God is calling you for that, that's wonderful, right? So we are there to give counsel. But we are not going to make the decision. No. In Jesus' name, I command that you, <laughs> you will get married. Giving some false prophecy and all of that. No, right? You make the decision. You want godly wisdom. You want some counsel. We'll just share it with you, right? Um, correct people lovingly. One of the, you know, uh, a difficult aspect for a leader is to correct lovingly, but we do it because we love them, we care for them, right? Okay, next one. If the head is not right, the body won't be right. Proverbs twenty nine twelve. When a leader listens to malice. Malicious gossip. All the workers get infected mm. with evil. Now just look at the natural, our brain. If the head is infected, what's going to happen? If you, if your mind tells you, "Hey, today you have fever," your body knows you have fever, but your mind is saying, "Hey, you have fever." But what you can do, even with fever, you'll not do. We will not do it. Why? Because the mind is telling us you can't do it. Right now, this is the CPU in our body. What is the CPU? Oh, central processing unit. 
everything that happens to us happens here first. And if the head is right, body is right. If your head is not right, it will affect your body. Right? And so even in the natural, in, when you look at leadership, if the head of the organization is doing things in a wrong way, they are, they are uh, involving in cheating and bribery and uh, you know leading the organization with ungodly principles, what's going to happen? The organization also will follow the same thing. Why? Hey, if the boss is doing, I'll do it. When you look at the government leaders, this is just an example. The government leaders are taking bribe. So those who are joining the government just as new recruiters, they say yeah, they are taking so and I'll take. What's happening? The head is affected. And that same thing will repeat in the body. So wh what is important here? We must, uh, the leader mu must be sincere. Uh, the leader may be, in may be sincere, but influenced by the wrong kind of people and wrong ideas. And that can affect everyone else as he leads. So you should you must have a strong sense of protecting yourself. Well, you say, okay, keep a check. The number one thing that we can do to know whether I'm doing something right or wrong is to test it with God's word. So as believers, we have we have an owner's manual. We have the, the word of God. So we can always check and see. Now, if I do this, am I doing it wrong? Is it wrong in the eyes of God? Is it a sin in the eyes of God? So some things we don't have to see. If somebody says, I'll give you a check of 10 lakhs, can you get this done? And you know it's not in line with God's word. First thing you see, you take the check back. Because you know it's wrong with God's word. Is the money good? Yes. But is it in line with God's word? No. Right. So if the head, you as a leader, must protect yourself from the things that the enemy can come against us with. It is our responsibility to protect ourselves, right? Keep a track of what you're doing, what you're speaking, and uh, how your life is. Keep a track of it. Again, as we said, leaders, nobody will tell us. We're independent. Right? We can do what we want sometimes. Especially when you, you, know, you grow into a certain level of leadership, you are independent. It's a nice feeling at times. But it comes with responsibilities, right? Demonstrate, emphasize, empower, and celebrate leaders. Let's read Proverbs 16, 12 through 13. Proverbs 16, 12 and 13. Good, good leaders abhor wrongdoings of all kinds. Sound leadership has a moral foundation. Good leaders cultivate honest speech. They love advisors who tell them that tell they be the truth. Yeah. Good leaders leaders cultivate honest speech. They love advisors who tell them the truth. Honesty, integrity, and other core values come number one as priority. Right? Uh, in a world that we live in right now, you know, there's so much of evil, there's so much of corruption. When you stand as honest people, God honors that. He really honors that. I'm just going to share this, right? Now, I'm not comparing with, you know, APC with other ministries. I'm not doing that, right? I'm just sharing this. It's just for us to understand. I have, n till now, right, I have not seen any ministry put their financials on the website. Have you seen any? No ministry. I've not. I've not seen personally. I've not seen. Right? There could be. I'm not saying there is no, but there could be. Right? But I've not seen the entire year's financials, everything that every church member can see, anyone can see. You go to the website, go to financials. It's there. You may not even be in the church, but it's there. Why? Because at APC, one of our core values is integrity. Integrity. So being integrate, you know, whatever that comes in, 
we use it in a wise way. Nothing goes to the wrong place. It is used in ministry. So as leaders, we must develop other leaders, right? Be honest. Uh, you know, others may strike back to us on us because of our honesty, but it's good to protect yourself and say, okay, no, what I'm doing is, I'm, uh, you know, people may say things, but I will be honest because God has called me for this. It's an attribute that I must follow, right? Empower honest people by celebrating their honesty. You know, as I was growing up in, you know, God gave me a wonderful opportunity to grow up at a young age in ministry, uh, meaning to just grow up in church and get into leadership. I have made many mistakes, right? Uh, but one thing I learned is don't cover up a lie with another lie, right? Don't cover up your mistakes with a lie. Because when you cover up one mistake with a lie, you'll have to tell maybe 10, 20 lies after that. And God can expose all of that. So many times, right, they've asked me, can you do, have you done this? I've said no. Why? I may have forgotten, or may, I may have procrastinated and say, okay, I'll do it later next week. I've said no, I've not done it. Right? It is better to be honest than to come up with your own ideas and own solutions. You get what I'm saying? Right? Nothing wrong. Empower people by celebrating their honesty. Honesty is not only in the good things. When we do something wrong, be honest about it. We'll talk a little bit about that later as well. Right? There will be consequences. But remember that people will always look at honesty and say, hey, he was honest. Said the truth. Right? So being honest is very powerful. I remember this happened uh, just a couple of weeks back uh, when we went to, uh, I went to my son's school and, uh, you know, something happened. There was a misunderstanding. And uh, during the parent teacher meeting, this, the teacher told me, see, one thing I know about your son, Ethan, is that he's honest. He's naughty. He keeps talking, disturbing in the class, maybe. But he's honest. When you ask him something, he will not lie. So you, the teacher was telling the other boy, see, one thing I know is Ethan was honest. If he has not done it, he's not done it. So he's saying he's not done it. So you tell me. And for me, I was so pleased to hear that. Of course, he did so. He was disturbing the class, talking, running around. But the teachers, he's he's already made a statement there, third standard. He's made a statement. Ethan will be honest. If he's not done his homework, he's not done it. If he's not signed his diary, it's not signed. He will not make up things. So you tell me. And that other boy said, yeah, actually, it was me. And Ethan said, I told you. If I did it, I'll tell you I did it. <laughs> right? And it was very simple. And of course, you know, I corrected him for his behavior in the class. But honesty and the teacher was you know was very happy with this aspect in his life said the young age he's very honest he's not afraid of the consequences so he doesn't lie i was so pleased right? but there are other areas that he has to improve right so we correct him that way so honesty will people will look at it and you'll be honored for it remember that right your attitude wrecks or invigorates. Tolerate, people tolerate or celebrate you. So basically, your attitude is noticeable. Uh, it affects others. Uh, it affects people. If it's good, it will affect them. If it's bad, it will affect them badly. Right. So choose your attitude. As a leader, you must learn to refresh people with your attitude. Right. Be real, down to earth, avoid pretense. Proverbs 13, 7. Let's read. Proverbs 13 7. A pretentious, showy life is an empty life. A plain and simple life is a full mm. life. Leadership is not a show business. 
Like leadership is simp uh, is just a normal human being. He's not from a different planet. He's not, uh, you know, somebody who must be worshipped. Leaders are normal people going through normal things in life. They go through the same problems that we go through. We go through. The, they may go through the same sicknesses, same troubles, same mountains. You know, money doesn't resolve everything. You know, especially when we look at people who are rich. I say, oh, so rich, he has everything. It doesn't resolve anything. It may serve some places. You may be able to travel in luxury and all of that. But if your heart is empty or your spirit feels lowly and dry, no money can fill that. Right? So leadership, leaders are called to be down to earth, to be real. Avoiding pretense, right? be accessible, be approachable. Remember where people want to talk to you, laugh, cry, be normal, right? Sometimes you say, oh, I should not cry, I'm a leader. Why? King Hezekiah himself cried. David himself cried. These are great leaders. King of, King of Israel, he's sitting and crying. Jesus also cried. Wrong. Imagine, imagine they, those, they were standing in front of Lazarus there. What is Jesus doing? Crying. Jesus wept. So there's nothing wrong as leaders to cry. Show your emotions. Right. Uh, uh, remember that, uh, you know, so people, when they see it, they'll say, okay, hey, even he cries, even he's going through difficulty. As a leader, when he's going through challenges, right? So people see it and... Uh, Hold on to high standards in all these areas, yet and yet be a normal person, right? Uh, now, this part is very important. Be careful of familiar familiarity. Wait, let me just go down a little bit. Be careful of familiarity. Look at this. In the wrong sense, where people will no longer take you seriously. This is a very important point, right? So we need to develop this ability where you look at your people. When people look at you, they say, hey, he's a leader. I must respect him. I must honor him because he's a leader. But I must also be able to you know, speak into their lives and be open for them to come and share what they want to share. But I must also make, make it a point not to be in a place where, OK, anyway, he will forgive us. Anyway, he's good. Anyway, we had chai last week, tea together. We enjoyed our uh, breakfast together. So uh, no. So don't let there be a sense of, uh, you know, because we are familiar with each other, so I can you know do whatever I want. No. So you, people have to continue to take you seriously because your words mean much. Right. So, so you, how do I maintain that balance? In, when it comes to correction, correct. Right. Don't stop. Give good correction. When it comes to uh, raising up leaders, when it comes to uh, work, let work be work. Let personal life or friendship be that. Right. Even now, if I desire, I can take the phone, call up any of our pastors, talk to them. I want to meet with you, Pastor. I can. Why? Because there's this freedom that is given to us. I can. Uh, but I don't take it just as a joke. We've had lunch together. We go have tea together. In office, we go have tea. So we have tea. We, they all talk and all of that. But when we come back to office, it's office. He's Pastor. I need to respect him. He's my leader. So I need to respect him, right? So we need to maintain that balance as leaders. Okay, we'll take a break. We'll come back and continue from here.